Hello. My name is Pranimi Lambov. I work on uh, the core Cassandra database, uh, mainly dealing with local storage on the database. And today I'm going to talk about compaction in Cassandra. And I guess you all know that Cassandra is a distributed database. And uh, behind the covers uh, to store data, it uses uh, the concept of a log structured merge tree. What does this mean? This means that we have multiple components uh, that hold data and where every time we need to read something off the database, we consult all of these components, we do a merge, and we report the result to the user. The other side of the, the question, writing data in Cassandra is actually very fast because it only has to go into a uh, in-memory buffer before it's acknowledged as, um, as written. And um, from there, because this memtable buffer from time to time fills up, it needs to be sent to disk, to a on-disk SS table. And uh, if we don't do anything to these on-disk SS tables, uh, a lot of them eventually accumulate and uh, reads become more and more difficult because we, they have to consult all of these components. So from time to time we have to reorganize the on-disk components and the process which reorganizes the components is called compaction. Uh, generally, compaction has to balance between two things. The number of SS tables we have to consult when we read something, a piece of data, and also the number of times uh, every piece of data that enters the system has to be rewritten. Uh, written to the mem table and to commit log once, then written again when we flush it, then we have to write it again when we compact a piece of uh, a few SS tables into a different one. So how many times do we do this actual compaction is uh, the right amplification. So. We have different compaction strategies to uh, try to balance this differently. Uh, in Cassandra, we've had for a long time two uh, main compaction strategies. I'm not going to talk about time window uh, for now. Um, so the main compaction strategies are size, size tiered and leveled. Uh, these are descriptions what they do. Don't read them. Um, generally, what, what we end up having is that size tiered actually works well enough for, especially for uh, key value workloads where you can use the Bloom filters, uh, it, it's actually very efficient and very good, but it has a problem with uh, creating humongous SS tables, just SS tables that are so large that, you, that they are unwieldy to, to work with. This is okay if nothing goes wrong, but the moment something needs to be done, like introduce a new node to the, to the system or repair something, or uh, if, you, if a node dies and has to restart a very long running compaction, you run into problems because of the size of these SS tables. Also, it's not geared towards data that's not uh, um, key value. Uh, if, for example, if you have white partitions, it's, uh, it has to consult many more SS tables. So it's, it's not very good fit for, for workloads which are read heavy or workloads which have, which have white partitions and tombstones. On the other side of the, uh, the story, we have the leveled compaction strategy, which um, the main problem with it is that it has a very, very high write amplification, and it also has a few um, very serious bottlenecks in its throughput. For example, it can't compact level uh, zero to level one if there's an ongoing compaction from level one. Even if there's just one ongoing compaction, it can't compact anything else into level one, which means that it has all these periods where it can't do anything on the lowest levels of the hierarchy, which we try to fix by other means, and it ends up only being really useful if you don't write a lot of data to the, to the database. Um, so, one of the benefits of leveled, one of the many benefits of leveled is that it actually uh, splits SS tables into small components, uh, but it's very, I mean, if you, if you have a lot of writes, it has a very, very low um, throughput limit. Uh, can we have something that's a combination of these two, that has the good sides of these two, and uh, it works well for read-optimized workloads as well as write-optimized workloads, and doesn't create humongous SS tables? This is what the Unified Compaction Strategy is, supposed, is, is hoping to do. Now, um, these two strategies look very, very different, but if you um, try to think about what they actually try to achieve, they're not that different. Uh, we can think about uh, what they try to achieve as the, the target state that they want the compaction hierarchy to be, that they want the data on the disk to be. Uh, so for size tiered, it's, we want to have SS tables grouped in, uh, based on their side, size into levels, and we want to have 
up to threshold many levels, SS tables on each level, actually less than SS table many, uh, threshold many SS tables on each level. And leveled compaction strategy on the, the other hand tries to keep just one uh, SS table run, uh, so one non-overlapping list of SS tables on each level, and again groups the SS tables into levels by powers of the fun factor. So actually they're not that different if you ignore for a second the, the, the question of SS table runs, we can, we can think of a leveled strategy being something that, again, has groups SS tables and levels by the powers of the fun factor, and it keeps at most one SS table on each level. While tiered has the same grouping of SS tables and levels, but it accepts more than just one SS table on each level, up to, up to the, the fun factor, actually. Um, it has to be less than the fun factor. And these differences are enough to define uh, the main difference in behavior between these two. Uh, for tiered compaction, once we reach uh, the situation where we want to do a compaction, this one compaction has enough data that the result of a compaction move on, moves on to the next level of the hierarchy. While in, in the leveled scenario, we get a little bit more data, which the result of this usually ends up on the same level until we do enough compactions of newly arrived data to get large enough to go to the next level. So the main difference is that uh, in tiered, we do one compaction to reach the next level, but we have to consult more SS tables per level. In level, we do more compactions to reach the next level, but we do just one uh, lookup every time we need to carry for a piece of data. Uh, and the result is that uh, tiered has low write amplification, but high read amplification, and leveled has high write amplification and low read amplification. Uh, based on this uh, this choice, whether or not we were using a threshold of two or a threshold of the fun factor, and this uh, this is the basis of uh, of the unified compaction strategy. Uh, basically, we can start by looking at the sizes of SS tables. We can split them in levels based on their size. Uh, what factor of the, uh, of the sorry, what power of the fun factor? Uh, are they at when you divide their size by, by the, the minimum SS table size. And once we group them into levels, we check how many there are on each level. And if we find too many, defined by um, based on whether we're doing leveled compaction, too many is two, or if we're doing tier compaction, too many is F many, the fun factor many, then we start doing a compaction. Um, Actually, because these two are mutually, mutually exclusive, and you can actually, uh, when you increase the fun factor in the level of compaction, you're doing more read optimization at the expense of uh, more writes. And when you're moving a high, for a higher fun factor, if you're doing tiered compaction, you're doing less write optimization, but more uh, write optimization. You can put these... Um, into one single parameter, which, can, which we understand to be doing leveled compaction if it's negative. And as you go into more and more of the negatives, we're doing more and more optimization towards reads at the expense of doing more writes. And when you go into the, in the positive direction, you're actually doing a little more uh, reads for every query, but you're doing less work every time you, you, uh, you take a new write. So this gives you a space of uh, many possible options for, for how you can tune your um, compaction strategy to work better for your, for your workload. Actually, you can do a little bit more uh, because now we have this definition of, uh, of a scaling parameter uh, for the levels. We can use this scaling parameter to have different values for every one level of the hierarchy. Uh, this is very useful uh, when you use it um, to do tiered compaction on the lowest levels of the hierarchy and switch on to leveled for the higher ones, uh, this lets you have a, a much bigger buffer where you can take uh, writes, a lot of writes in a very short period, but then your data is still pretty well optimized when you're, especially when you need to read data of the, the, the older and more difficult to read SS tables, which, which are larger. Uh, so this here is much more configurable in terms of uh, what, what do we do uh, how much we want to optimize towards reads or towards writes, but this doesn't solve the problem of um, these humongous files that uh, size-tiered compassion strategy generated, because this definition was given by uh, the levels being determined by SS table size. The SS table size still has to grow a lot for this, for this compassion strategy to work. 
uh, we can solve this problem. And the, the solution to this problem comes into um, using two, two concepts, the density and the overlap. Uh, the density is something that we can replace uh, the size with. This is a parameter that we define as the, the ratio between the size of the SS table and the token share that it covers. We, this here is something that we want to, um, to grow every time we do compaction, regardless of whether or not we split the output. Um, so the idea here is we take multiple um, SS tables as input, and we can either create one big SS table, which is four times, uh, in, this type, in this case, four times bigger, or we can start writing, at some point split the SS table, uh, I mean split the output and switch to a new SS table, then continue doing this and end up with four smaller SS tables, but we can still understand them as being compacted a little bit more, having more data in them, even though they're actually smaller in, in size, uh, more dense is the concept case because in, in Cassandra we usually assume that your partitions and your tokens distribute data roughly evenly when we use the token share as, the, uh, as a divisor in this, in this formula. When we split, for example, if we split into four equi uh, equal in size uh, SS tables, each of them is going to cover one fourth of the space of the original SS table. So the, the density is going to be 400 megabytes for each of the smaller SS tables, even though they're actually 100 megabytes in size. And actually, it doesn't matter where you, where you split these SS tables because their share is going to be dependent on the position where you split them. Even at the bottom right corner, uh, even sizes vary, these SS tables are still going to have the same density, uh, 400 megabytes, which means it's being compacted a little bit more than these ones that we, uh, that we started with. The other concept we're using for, um, to be able to split SS tables and still um, define this compaction strategy is overlap. Now, if you think about answering a query for a specific partition key, um, if two SS tables don't overlap, you only need to query on a, one of them to get that SS table, uh, to get that, the answer to this query because it's going to fall, fall, fall into the, the regions or the spans of one of the SS tables and not the other. So things that don't overlap don't matter for, for the read overhead, for the read amplification. So uh, we essentially can uh, only consider the overlapping SS tables when deciding whether or not we should kick off a compaction. And this brings rise to the, uh, to the final definition of the unified compaction strategy. We use the SS table density, which was the size of the SS table divided by its token share. Um, again, it grows by, uh, its SS tables are put in levels by the, the fun factors, but we only use the overlapping SS tables to decide whether or not we should trigger a compaction. Uh, I'm going to give an example now. Uh, consider, let's say that we have an, um, compaction strategy which is configured with these parameters uh, T4 or tiered compaction with four, uh, fun, fun factor 4 at the bottom level and for level 1 we have tiered compaction with uh, fun factor 3 or threshold 3 and uh, suppose we have a leftover SS table in level 1 and we uh, had recently flushed four uh, SS tables of size 100 megabytes and since they're flushed they're fresh they're usually covering the whole the whole token space uh, because the, the, the mem tables usually cover the whole token space. So we start up with these four. Uh, unified compaction strategy is asked, do we want to do any compactions? Then it sees that it has four on level zero. These four overlap. Uh, the threshold is four, so it decides, yes, we do need to, to do a compaction. Uh, the total size of these SS tables is 400 megabytes. So it decides for these 400 megabytes, I'm going to split the result into four, into four different shards. And it starts compacting, and uh, every time it reaches the boundary of the shard while it's doing a compaction, it finishes an SS table and starts writing a new one. So it will write one, two, three, four SS tables, that each of them is going to cover one-fourth of the, of the token space, and each of them is going to be roughly about 100 megabytes big. Um, yeah. Once we complete with this compaction, we remove the inputs, but we also remove the shard boundaries because uh, they're not necessary for, for the next step, steps of the, the compaction process. 
suppose we get a little bit more data, and this time um, it's a little smaller. Um, I mean, the flushes happened uh, more often or with less data. And let's suppose they, we ended up with four SS tables of 60 megabytes each. And this time, because the overall data is smaller, uh, the compaction strategy decides to split it into just two shards instead of four. So it can do this and end up with uh, two SS tables as a result, um, one covering half the token space and the other covering the other, the other half. Uh, again, once we're done with this, we get rid of the shard boundaries because we don't use them in deciding what to do next. Now, we have a few SS tables on level one, and when the unified compaction strategy is asked to do, uh, what, to do some other compaction next, it's going to have to decide whether or not it should do a compaction. And to do this, it starts uh, forming the so-called overlap sections, uh, which means that it's trying to find positions where, uh, I mean, the, the spans of, uh, of tokens, where we have SS tables that don't overlap with each other are going to define a boundary, and we're trying to find all of the combinations we have from different SS tables in these sections. So in this case, it's, uh, the overlap sections are A and E, uh, B and E, C and F, and D, F and G. And because D, F and G are three SS tables, three overlapping SS tables, and the threshold for this level is set at three, we're going to uh, understand that now we need to do a compaction with these uh, SS tables, D, F and G. Because F actually covers a little bit more space and there's another SS table that um, overlaps with it, we're going to include that SS table in the compaction because it makes, uh, it makes the whole process a little bit more efficient. So now we're going to, do, to use C, D, F, and G as the, uh, the bucket for compaction. And we're going to start the compaction with these four SS tables. Um, now, these are four, 430 megabytes in size. Uh, they cover half the, the, the token space. So um, there are density, or the density of the data that we're compacting right now is about 860 megabytes, uh, which the strategy decides is something that needs eight, eight shards for the result. So it defines eight shard boundaries and starts compacting. The uh, actual compaction is going to use only half of them because it's only writing data that starts from half of the space, and uh, so the end result gets split into four, four SS tables. Um, yeah, so this was the example. Uh, and how did we actually decide uh, how, many, how many shards to, um, to, figure, to, to choose for the, for the compactions? Um, for this leveled compaction strategy, uh, we can take it as an example. Uh, but it has a little bit of a problem. In level compaction strategy, we uh, switch to a new SS table every time we reach a predetermined size, usually 160 megabytes. Um, this is okay, it creates small, small files, uh, but the problem is that the next time you need to do a compaction, you have a lot of uh, boundaries that move, uh, because Sometimes these 160 megabytes are going to be at one position, and the next time you do a flush or, or a compaction, they're going to move to a different position. So every time you're going to do a new compaction on these things, you're going to use a little bit more. Uh, you're going to, to bring into the compaction SS tables that only partially overlap with these boundaries, uh, which is not, not ideal because you're going to do more work uh, because these boundaries are going to be compacted again and again and again, more than they, they actually need to be. And also it gives you a little bit of a uh, oddity in, in, in the densities and, and everything. So we'd prefer to have some fixed boundaries or boundaries that we, uh, we come back to when we do the same operation again and again. So that the way that we do this is uh, when we decide what the um, what the density of a set of SS table is going to be, and we prepare in advance shard boundaries on which we're going to split based on, this, uh, on the size of this operation. And um, the way we do it is that we uh, basically calculate the, um, the ratio between uh, the size that we've calculated and, and a certain uh, target SS table size, and we find the nearest power of two so that we split the, the space into um, SS tables uh, that 
roughly uh, that aim to be between um, the, the target as a stable size over square root of two and the target as stable size times square root of two. Um, this, uh, this actually works well unless you're uh, actually having a lot of data like uh, over, uh, well, multiple, more than one digit of terabytes in, in a node where you can end up with uh, tens of thousands of SS tables, which has its own set of problems. So uh, the way we, we solve this particular issue is by um, letting the SS table size grow or uh, just letting the SS table size take a little bit of the growth of the, of the number of shards. And by default, it's set to grow um, twice every time the number of shards grows four times which is a, uh, is a good um, middle ground, uh, letting, us, uh, letting, letting the, strat the, the strategy work with uh, very, very wildly varying uh, densities of, of node, including up to 10s and 20, 30, 40 terabytes, the, the most that you can put on, on a node currently. Um, yeah. The unified compaction strategy, one of the things about this density and overlap decisions that it makes is that it actually understands what uh, the previous compaction strategies, both STCS and LCS, are trying to do when they're compacting. STCS grows bigger and bigger files because they're bigger files and cover whole space. They're also bigger in density. LCS also, when it compacts, it creates the same size as the tables, but they span smaller and smaller and smaller portion, portions of the space. So their density again grows. And uh, this means that UCS can actually uh, take advantage of what uh, the previous, the other strategies have done. And it can continue their work rather than recompacting, which we've had to do uh, previously if we're trying to switch between one compaction strategy and, and another. Uh, what's the end result of this? Uh, here's an example of uh, the same Wide, uh, wide partition workload using the three, three strategies. UCS is a little bit faster um, because this is, a, this is a workload that doesn't favor STCS. If it favors STCS, uh, they're going to be on, this, on par UCS and STCS. But in this case, because it's a read heavy workload, uh, actually a wide partition workload, which is by sort of by definition read heavy, um, UCS can do better. And LCS, which is aimed, actually it was introduced to be able to deal with these part white partitions well, it's actually doing pretty badly. Um, what, what if we upgrade at some point to, uh, to UCS? You can see here that uh, even though, uh, well, in this example, uh, at 20,000 seconds, we switched the compaction strategy from LCS or STCS whatever it was, to UCS. And we can see from this graph that from 20,000 20, seconds onwards of the compaction, I mean, the, the switch to UCS immediately improved performance and there was no, um, there was no additional work or any, any complications of this upgrade process. It actually immediately worked uh, better than it did before. Um, there are a few more tricks up the UCS sleeve to make it a good, compaction strategy to work in a lot of scenarios. One of them is that it can do whole table exploration like, like uh, TWCS. And uh, because it tries, because it usually avoids mixing old SS tables with new ones, it's able to, uh, to apply whole table exploration well. It actually works well for time series workloads as well, especially if you use a, um, a tiered compaction with high factor. Uh, something else that uh, we built into this is an ability to um, prioritize compactions in such a way that no level of the compaction hierarchy is left behind. So that we don't get a lot of uh, SS tables accumulating on any, any level of the strategy. So if you have a lot of data being pumped and compaction is continuously not able to do its job, um, well, it's going to distribute the work it does among the levels so that it, uh, it lets nothing fall behind, and it actually keeps up, uh, I mean, keeps a state that uh, it can do, um, I mean, it can do its compaction 
uh, reasonably well and it doesn't get into a situation where because your compaction is so so much behind you get a very very bad perf poor performance like the uh, this example with use with leveled compaction strategy here with these long periods where actually it seems like nothing is happening uh, UCS will not run into into such a situation um, and something else that's important is that if you want to change the compaction you do for example you find that uh, your late your read latencies are higher than you want them to be and you want to do more read optimization you can change the parameters it's not going to trigger a lot of compactions just a little bit and you can very easily do this and uh, it's very different from, from the previous compaction strategies where most of the time, if you do a change, all of your data needs to be recompacted again. Uh, this is not uh, something that will happen in, with uh, UCS. So it also makes it possible to um, imagine an automatic uh, compaction, an automatic mechanism for, for adjusting compaction so that it, it's more efficient for a use case. And this is something that we've been developing as well, which is not yet ready, but is in the process of uh, being introduced. Um, yeah. So adaptive compaction I mentioned. Uh, another thing that we're uh, thinking of adding in the future is the possibility to have time-based levels in, in unified compaction strategy. The reason to have time-based levels is on one hand to be able to do things like, uh, I mean, to explicitly do what uh, the time window compaction strategy does, uh, to split data into old and new data and don't process any old data uh, after it's, uh, it's been there for, for a given period. But also something else that people often do is that uh, they want to have the whole uh, data set uh, recompact every, let's say, four, two weeks or four weeks or something like this uh, to get rid of tombstones, for example. And it's possible to introduce a mode for UCS where it says, well, we have this bucket that's four weeks old. Whenever something, something gets four weeks old, let's recompact all of it. Let's do a, a full compaction of these, these things. And it's uh, a possibility to solve this problem and deal better with tombstones as well. That's something that we don't have yet, but uh, it looks like it's something that can be easily added, and our friends at Netflix have uh, expressed interest in, in making that happen. That was all of my talk. Um, actually, before questions, um, shameless plug uh, for Cassandra 5, we have these uh, latest set of settings, uh, Cassandra latest YAML, which enables all of the new features of Cassandra 5. If you're using the default YAML, it's going to be conservative and it's not going to be use anything, anything of the new stuff because uh, we assume that you're going to want to downgrade at some point. Uh, and if you're trying to benchmark the new uh, Cassandra 5 and you use these settings, you're not going to be getting the performance of Cassandra 5. Here's an example of the difference over two times faster if you, do, if you use the new settings. Sorry, back to questions.